What's up everybody, Rob Anderson, Clean Power Wash, Salisbury, Maryland. Uh, dashboard mount's a little too hot right now to run that, uh, or have it holding in there. So, um, so I'm reading um, cash, flow uh, cash Flow Quadrant, uh, Rich Dad's Cash Flow Quadrant. Um, and I'm also going through, and we were watching Founder last night. Um, and, you know, we, we talk about systems all the time, and it, it seems like this big, daunting, nebulous, what does that really mean? How does this mean I'm just putting a step one, two, three, four, five, six, through like 20 for every single thing that we do? Um, and it, it's interesting when you really and truly see the value of systems. Um, how simple some of them can be, how some need to be designed, redesigned, thrown out, redone again and again until you get it right. Um, and that's so that that's what it kind of got out of that. I mean, with with a lot of the stuff talking about um, businesses from cash flow quadrant, um, talking about you know the businesses that have good systems are more likely to get bank funding or investors because that's what they're paying for. They're paying for the system, not for necessarily the product that's coming out of the system. You know, a bank needs to see that it, it's a reproducible process that can get you a, a consistent result. And that's the whole thing with McDonald's. You know, and even they, they talk about that, that that was their issue when they try to franchise stuff or try to grow, was keeping that same level of um, consistency when you know when they franchise and the the two owners weren't at those other locations it's the same thing for us with businesses it's the same thing as soon as you go from the truck that you're on to now you've got a helper making sure that you know you're overseeing what they're doing then you go to have you know a lead tech or multiple lead techs well, they're still hitting that same level of consistency and quality that you or I are able to make happen and uh, the level that we hold ourselves to and the only way to do that is again it, it's going to be by systems it's going to be by scrutiny um, it's going to be by you know making these processes so repetitive that it's automatic that there's not a change on how you handle this situation or that situation you know if it's a dirty house you do this if it's a roof you do this you know, if we're cleaning a deck, it's like this. You know, here's, you know, step one, identify it. Step two, what's the process that we're going to use to attack it? Um, and you know, obviously, you're going to have some time for you're going to um, divert from the regular processes and, uh, processes and procedures for it or your system. Uh, but the other 95, 99% of the time should be able to be, you know, listed in some form of process that's been generated um, and you know even looking at the the stuff for the guys with, with the whole McDonald's thing you know they're talking about which way people are moving this and that and then redesigning uh, making everything as efficient as possible um, so you know they can make a burger burger from grill to, to customer in 30 seconds or whatever the, the metric was there and you don't get that by you know five different cooks trying to do it their own different way and expecting a consistent result you know they the way they ended up succeeding was getting you know people that were willing to be that detail oriented to focus specifically on exactly what needed to be done the standards and holding it to that you know like here is what we are going to focus on this is exactly what needs to be done the way it needs to be done um, and we're not departing from that um, Granted, we deal with houses and not burgers, but at the same time, there, there's still variations in, in a lot of other components that as owners, we have to figure out a way to eliminate that if we want to grow successful businesses, and especially ones that are going to be able to operate without us playing an active role every day in. So, um, again, keep it simple. Start with the things that you know 100% that you do automatically. Get that stuff. Even just, it doesn't even have to be some perfect, you know, my English professor or teacher is going to be proud of me for how it looks. No, like, get this down. And sometimes, too, it's going to be, it's going to be a rougher draft, you know, 
your final system might be, let's say, 15 steps or 15 items. Well, you know, you break it down into three or five categories um, and then break that down further and further. And you also have to realize that, you know, what we do every day with a house wash probably is, you know, let's say 20 different systems to get us from, you know, the people showing up at what time they need to, getting everything ready, leaving, getting to the job, talking to the customer, doing the work, collecting the check, putting out the sign, asking for referrals, setting up the things afterwards, you know, depositing the payment, uh, posting it to the account, sending the customer the receipts, sending up your, um, you know, your process to go ahead and send out the thank you cards and things from Send Jim, um, and so on. And you know, and then setting up a follow-up for that customer for follow-up survey, follow-up service, um, and all the other things that you know, if we've made happen in our business on a daily basis or on an every, every job basis would result in immediate growth and long-term sustainable growth. So again, do what you can. You know, having one system. Is better than none having five six ten systems that are you know imperfect but on their way is also great as well so again it, it's just about continuing to make progress so have a great day